February 8th, 2009. The day that I posted my first video here on YouTube. A silent review of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as Serpent Terra. It was a video I made using a very old webcam, old even for the time. I couldn't get an orange wash out of it, and I couldn't get any sound produced because I didn't have a built-in microphone. But I decided to shoot the video anyways. Of course, not knowing at the time it didn't have any audio, I overlaid music when I went to editing because I decided I'm gonna post this anyways. And it changed my life because I created a YouTube channel July of 2008 with the hopes and attempt of making my own videos. At the time, I was 12 years old, which sounds a little insane, but it was what I wanted to do. I had recently joined, you know, online collecting fan groups and forums for Transformers mostly and, and other properties, and I wanted to do videos because I saw other people were doing videos that were toy reviews, and I thought to myself, I could do the same thing, and I have something I want to say about this stuff. And so it came from that. It started from that. The name Sound Out was very simply a combination of two of my favorite Transformers, Soundwave and Blackout. It was like my favorite G1 Transformer, and my favorite Transformer of all time, and then my favorite movie Transformer. Because at the time there was only one movie as well. But the two of those together formed the name Sound Out. And when I joined YouTube, I couldn't use the name Sound Out. And so at the time I was 12, so I just stuck a 12 at the end. And the 12 has followed me. It's like a, a weird number that's kind of tracked with things that I do. Uh, ironically, it was just something I picked at the time. But it wasn't until the following February of 2009, after I turned 13, that I actually got a video out. Um, there's a bunch of old, you know, just cassette tapes from an old camcorder I used to use, which I couldn't figure out how to digitize. I tried my best, but it just didn't work. And I found some of them a few years ago, and they're pretty, they're pretty cringeworthy. I'm kind of glad they're not out there. Um, but it was my first attempt. I, I was just doing whatever I could. And when I got this webcam that just instantly digitized footage, I just ran with it. Like, I attached that thing to an old tripod using tape and cardboard. <laughs> just because that was what I wanted to, to film with. I used my desk as a setup. Uh, I just put Serpentera out there did a whole review, did the talking portion as well, because I had studied you know, reviewers for a long time at that point. Um, I'd seen so many videos. And so that, that sense of doing my own videos and then finding out later, oh no, I don't have any audio. Uh, I just overlaid a remix of the Power Rangers theme from a CD I had. And that thing's been copyright claimed before, so I don't even know if it's available anymore. But some of you people may not be able to watch it, but... <sighs> It was a start. It was a start. It, it got me started. Um, I was using Windows Movie Maker. It's incredibly crude work, but that was 10 years ago. And I think back to like the older days of video reviewing for toys and how it was much different than it is now. Nowadays we have YouTube analytics and we have, you know, tags and, you know, YouTube's not monetizing people properly or you're getting demonetized for stuff or copyright. There's a lot of drama involved with having a YouTube channel now. Back when I started, it wasn't so hard. It just seemed like you could just go out there and make videos. Within a year, I made YouTube Partner and had monetization, and I was making consistent money from it, which was really great, because that kept me getting to do more videos. Um, but there's there's something that, like, looking back on my 10 years on YouTube, and looking at other creators that have been around as long or longer, or even less time, I found that I don't feel like my channel is as strong as it was, is now as it was then. Uh, it, it's something that I've been trying to pinpoint, but it kind of hit the realization to me the other day as I came up to the 10th year of being on YouTube, was that for a lot of reviewers that started around the same time as me and the ones that I took inspiration from, they were in their adult lives. You know, most of the reviewers were like Transformers reviewers, pretty much just did Transformers stuff and then branched out from there uh, with you know, other reviewers there did Power Rangers and those, but mostly, mostly Power Rangers or mostly Sentai or something like that, where like there's a main focus and then, you know, cause that's like, they've, they're, they're most beloved franchise. 
for me, I was 13 when I started. And now that I'm 23, things are so much different for me now than they were then. Back then, my life was Power Rangers and Transformers, and pretty much that was it. Nowadays, it's more Gundam and DC. It's it's different. Like it, The thing is, I think one of the reasons why this channel has had a lack of focus is because I was growing up on YouTube. I've been spending my, my, my whole teenage years, and now I'm in my 20s, and I've been doing videos on YouTube, and I've been interacting with people online that like the same things I do. I didn't have, like, this point of, you know, having to hide what I love because I had nobody to talk to about it. I, I've had that opportunity that, you know, as I transitioned from childhood to adulthood, you know, and throughout my teenage years, I've had, you know, friends that I can talk to about stuff. Like, I have a very good, you know, social life in that regard because... I'm able to talk to people and have an outlet for stuff that I like that's nerdy and maybe isn't what most people like. And then in my more personal life, I can have more normal conversations because all my nerd stuff I, I have an outlet for. Um, and so it's like I, I know how to, you know, interact with other people, but I still, most of my closest friends are absolute nerds and we nerd out about stuff and it's wonderful. But I think that YouTube is also being here and doing videos like this and talking to a camera and dealing with comments and people, uh, negative and positive, has helped shape my communication skills in a way. Because I do feel more confident about stuff and I don't let people's words get to me because I've already gone through that at a much younger age than most. Um, so I really feel grateful that I've done this and I really feel like, you know, now that I've gotten to this point, I look back and I'm like, okay, there was that time I did a G.I. Joe review, that one time. There was a time I did some Dragon Ball reviews for, like, several videos. I did a whole Toy Story week. I did, you know, Ben 10 stuff a couple times. I did Star Wars stuff a couple times. I've done, you know, just random stuff. Like, that's why I created Soundout's Toy Chest, was to kind of give it a focus to, to run with it. But for the most part, my consistent stuff was Transformers for the early years, even though I dropped off on that. Um, simply, I think, because it got too crowded in the review space, and I just got tired of reviewing them um but like now basically my main thing on this channel has been toku stuff with like sentai rider power rangers even though it's mostly just sentai because i've been buying as many toku things lately um and then gundam has been my focus for the last several years like i got i got into gundam about six years ago when i watched g gundam uh for the first time as an adult i'd watched some of it as a kid but i got really into it in 2013 and then I got heavily into Gun in about 2015, and I'm just, I haven't lost the love or the passion for Gundam stuff or Gunpla or anything like that. What, like I have with, say, Ben 10, or, um, or even Star Wars, or even Transformers. Like I, I'm this many years into the Gundam world now, and I feel like it's kind of like become my, one of my main passions um, so the second, like, it, it's, it may be second to DC Comics only because DC Comics has been a part of my life forever, um, but I think Tokusatsu's become a third, so I understand that, like, when I make videos, I look at view counts, and I'm like, okay, I got this many subscribers, only this many views, and I realize that since the beginning, I kind of have this split, uh, viewer base, like, I know some people are here only for Power Rangers stuff or Toku stuff. Some people are here only for Gundam stuff. Some people are here because they know me <laughs> and they wanted to support my channel and I, I, I love that. Some people are here for the Marvel Legends videos I do once a year. I really enjoy doing those. That's just the way I review Marvel Legends. Um, so I think people are here for different reasons. I don't know how many people are here for DC stuff. I've, I, I, I did a, a long stint of DC reviews when I started collecting DC Universe classics, which is absolutely my favorite toy line of all time. That's no... No, uh, no question there, but I, I look at the things that I love now, and I look at the things I loved back when I started, and it's like, throughout the years, I've just been in and out of consistency as well, um, and so I know that there's a lot of you out there, and there's a lot of you that like different things, and I, I'm so grateful for the support over the years, and every comment that's told me 
you know, this is a great video, thanks for making that. Oh wow, this is something cool and unique that no one else did. And even the people that were like, hope you die soon, and I said, yeah, maybe me too. Uh, you know, the, pos the, 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 the world is both light and dark, positive and negative, and I always try to take the negative comments in stride, but sometimes they do kind of like, you know, get to me a little bit, and that's, that's just like a natural thing. Uh, luckily, for the most part, most of my comments are positive, uh, and the other part of it is mostly in other languages I don't understand, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but I just, I'm grateful for everything that this channel has helped shape me as a human being and as a person living in life. And I think that while I don't know what the future of the channel necessarily is, this year I kind of felt like I got my mojo back a bit. I, I, I have like a direction I want to go in and you know, for now, this is what I want to do is what I want to do. <laughs> I think when I started this channel, I want to do videos on Power Rangers and Transformers. Nowadays, I just want to do videos on Gundam and Sentai and, you know, my my pickups of the week. I I don't know, like, the when I when I started the Sentai pickup series this weekend, it was something where I said to myself, all right, I need a video for 2019. I want to make a new logo. I want to animate that logo. I want to, like, step it up a little bit. Uh, and so then I just came up like, well, how about, you know, I just bought a bunch of Primal Age stuff. Let me just talk about what I got last week. And the, pos the, the positive response from everybody on that has been wonderful. And I definitely want to continue that. Um, as for other things, like, I know that over the years I've made so many video promises and never followed up on them. Uh, it just doesn't happen sometimes. Like, I... I want to, something in my life distracts me. Um, that's another side of things too, is that the majority of my time on YouTube I've spent in school, like between high school, because I, I started high school. Um, yeah, I started high school right after I started this channel. So I went through high school, went through college, went through traditional training. I'm still trying to find like my solid place in the workforce too, um, to get like a consistent revenue. But, you know, I've, I've learned so much. I've changed. I've set a standard for my work now, which sometimes impedes my ability to do stuff. Um, but I do realize that at the end of the day, I want to make a production and make videos that are quality, that ap appeals to me, but are of a subject matter that appeals to my audience. Uh, for example, I made a Model Kit Monday video, really nicely shot, nicely edited of the GM3 Beam Master from Gun and Build Divers. Not a lot of views. I did a top five real grades list one time where I just pointed a camera and talked off the top of my head and that got so many more and so many more responses. Um, and I think that's generally what I do know is that going forward, there's going to be a less focus on reviews. Like I don't want to say I'm never going to review a toy again because I do want to do some. I have a request I need to fulfill as well. Um, but I don't think that's my focus anymore. Like I think and then going forward, it's going to be more stuff like sound-ups pickups, more casual discussion of here's a bunch of items instead of doing individual videos. Uh, I'm going to bring back Model Kit Monday. That's a series I think I've had some pretty decent success with, and I want to keep pushing that further. I enjoy doing it as well. Um, and Model Kit Monday, I don't want it just to be like reviews every week. Like I want it to be, you know, top five, top ten lists, history videos, tutorial stuff. I want to do a custom spotlight, which I'll talk about in the future, but I want to like kind of engage the community a little bit with that. And I think that that's kind of where I'm going forward now is, is not so much, you know, put toy in front of camera and then review it because I think a lot of people do that and there's people that do it better than me. Uh, I want to do something unique. Back when I started, I was like, no one's going to have the perspective I have because everyone's older than me. That was my thought process back then. And nowadays it's like, I have my own life experiences and knowledge that I want to bring to the table. And a lot more of what I bring now is less so analysis of specific toys and more so, you know, maybe an entire line or just history of stuff. I love history and backstories for things. And, you know, I, I like researching and, and doing, doing work like that. So I think that's kind of where I'm going. Um, the future is bright. 2019 has been a better year for me already than 2018. And I look forward to what I can do on this channel. And I look, I hope, I hope that, you know, 
all of you out there that are watching this, follow me along. Because I know that if you're watching a video talking about my 10 years on YouTube, um, it's not just some random thing you, you clicked on because you were looking for a video of DC Primal Age. It's something you looked for because it was a video I posted, and I, I really appreciate that. Every time I do these 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 vlogs where I, I don't have a specific subject besides talking about this channel or talking about what's going on, I know people watching that are the ones that that are are here for for me <laughs> more so than the content, and I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, so I think that that does it for for this anniversary. I was thinking about doing something amazing and spectacular, but I thought kind of a reflection and a look back on, you know, 10 years on YouTube. That's a whole decade. That's most of my life. Uh, it's like 13 years of my life was not on YouTube. 10 years of it was. That's half my lifetime, essentially. And that's a lot of time. I've, I've changed a whole lot. Like, my voice is uh, 10 times deeper now than when it was when I started. My camera quality hopefully has improved, even though I'm just using an iPhone sitting on a, you know, poster board stand, because it's just what I have that works. Uh, you know, hopefully in the future, maybe I can improve camera stuff and lighting stuff, or I'll just keep working with what I got. I, I think when I have limitations on myself, I, I can kind of produce stuff better than I think I can. Um, it's kind of a challenge, and I, I, I do enjoy that. So um, stay tuned for the future. Stay tuned as things will hopefully pick up in consistency. I really, I really do want to do that. Um, I want to do sign up pickups and model kit Monday every week if I can. Um, but yeah, that does it. That does it for this. So thank you everybody for an amazing 10 years on YouTube. Uh, here's to 10 more, maybe if I feel like it. Um, I think everything going forward is how do I feel about it? I'm not worried about the YouTube views, the analytics, the monetization, the everything like that. If I, if I, if YouTube gives me money for, for doing this, um, wonderful. If not, you know, as long as I'm still enjoying it, I'm going to still go and keep going. Um, I, I've thought about doing Patreon, but I think I'm going to be holding off on that until I make, until I get myself more consistent. If I have consistent output, um, then I'd probably open a Patreon so I could improve camera, lighting, sets, etc., etc. Um, going forward. So anyways, thank you all so much. Till next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.